Hi, everybody. How you doing? I am Johan. That is Charleston. Oh, it's about to get good, man. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> Joining us today from North Carolina, <laughs> this man is uh, amazing to watch. This man was the 2019 most valuable player, the most outstanding player in the Canadian Football League. If you haven't seen some of his highlights, go check him out. Today joining us is Mr. Brandon Banks. Brandon, first off, what do you think about my shirt? <laughs> it's trash. <laughs> You're going to say shit and you kind of change that up. To, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is the worst logo in the CFL? <laughs> okay, I'll agree with you there. <laughs> do that. I had to no, work- no, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me, man. Hey. Definitely, definitely a platform and- I'm happy to be here. Brandon, thanks for joining us. we got so much to talk about, especially over the last few days that's happened here in the CFL and to do with this CFL. Congratulations to both you guys for now getting the news that you're going to be back playing. And not only that. Was you, was you on eggshells when they said Monday? I know. I was kind of nervous. Uh, I ain't going to lie, man. I had some insights, so I kind of knew what was going on under the table, you know what I'm saying? So on Monday, I already knew what was, what was going to kind of be announced. So <laughs> I was already preparing myself for, uh, you know, that date to be announced. And how was it? How has it been over the last little while? Because you are in North Carolina, right? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, man, just taking it day by day, uh, just uh, working out, trying to stay in shape as best as I can. And uh like I said, just waiting on hear something from the CFL for the past year and a half. Yeah, but, but uh, <laughs> that's the thing. That, that's the thing that's surprising. Like it's probably fucking sucked. Charleston, we've talked about this many times. Is that how do you you can't really prepare for any kind of season because there is no season, right? How's right. it how's it been in the states with and especially with the COVID numbers down around there? Mm-hmm. How's it been that you can't really go to a gym and train? You can't really go out now. It's better than even up here in Canada. But how's it been for right. you down in the states? Uh, well, when when COVID first broke out, uh, it was pretty tough. You know, everything pretty much shut down, uh, for like the first four or five months. Uh, but then, you know, obviously, you know, found ways, you know, around your house, do exercises in, in your neighborhood, uh, run around neighborhood and things like that. But as the year went on, you know, things kind of opened up and, um, North Carolina was kind of like, I don't know if you kind of heard how Atlanta and Florida was, it was a little bit kind of open before a lot of people was, so. We was able to go out. I was able to orchestrate actually a couple of camps and uh, meeting up with other football guys, uh, uh, orchestrating workouts and things like that. So I was mainly doing things like that to stay busy. But other than that, other than that, about the fourth, fifth month into COVID, we was pretty much open back to normal. Fuck, that's I mean. nuts. Yeah, <laughs> we've been on. I've been on straight <laughs> yeah. lockdown. I couldn't even go <laughs> to the gym. Here, man. It's different in the south, man. <laughs> 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 Charleston, how is it? How can you tell about Brandon's side versus your side? How has that been with you being here in Canada, kind of in the opposite of that? <laughs> man, they're not playing about that COVID stuff here in Canada. Like some places still on lockdown. Manitoba locked down right now. You can they, no, you can't go to no gym, can't go to no restaurant, you can't do nothing. So, Dang. so it's like when it's like that. And I work in Manitoba right now, so. Uh-huh. When I go there, I can't even I can't even lift no more. All I can do is run and just go for just do push ups, do band workouts, and run. That's it. All right. So okay, All right. I want to I want to know the two different sides of this because obviously Charleston, your training is going to be different than Brandon's training, and what he does. I'm spilling my fucking book everywhere. Um, Brandon <laughs> Brandon Brandon's training is a wide receiver is is going to be a lot more probably sprints speed. Maybe uh, less time in the weight room. Charleston, are you spending more time now? Like you got two weeks to be able to till you're ready for camp here. What? Yeah, but he ain't, he ain't the only one with speed. Like wow. my name, could, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my name could be Spe- no, no, Speedy C. Edge. Yeah, I come around that edge fast, man. Just because I can't run fast for a hundred yards like he can, I can run fast for ten. I'm quick in ten. Oh, you you, you want to get into special teams? How many times have you been on special teams? Do you want to try and catch him? Man, I, I remember I wasn't even playing in the Great Cup that year. And I remember I, I broke, I think I broke my foot at the time. And I remember he ran that kickoff back with like eight, 12 seconds left in the game. And he ran a punt return back. The punt return, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> punt return, yeah. Oh, 
I was on the sideline like, how did he just do this? And he just took the Grey Cup from us like that. <laughs> but when that flag went in the air, it was like a sign. <laughs> it was a sign of relief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. That was a pretty big moment. And obviously, Brandon, you get asked about that quite a bit too, eh? About how that was. Uh, what do you remember about that play? Oh, uh, man, it was like the, the what can, how can I explain? It was like the best, worst day of my life. <laughs> it was like somebody robbed me without a gun. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, no, man. It was like the greatest moment was ever for a football player was, you know, took him from me but it was part of the game you know i mean obviously the guy didn't go out there and try to uh commit a penalty on purpose but uh man yeah man that was the worst feeling man i remember after the game man i was stuck in the hotel room until we boarded the flight back to hamilton i, I was just devastated man because i thought we had one i thought we ended the game on like one of the greatest you know great cup endings ever so yeah. but, it damn sure would have yeah. been the greatest Grey Cup ending of all time because <laughs> yeah. I was hurt. Yeah, I was so hurt. Like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and there's been so many more um, moments like that um, that you've had, Brennan, with your return game. You are more of a return specialist, but you've also, I think, changed the way the defenses, um, you know, play you. I remember watching on your Twitter uh, I think you're you're showing some game film of the end arounds, and now that the way the defensive ends, Charles, maybe you can answer this. Do you guys have a different game format of how you prepare versus when you're playing a guy like Brandon? Yeah, man, you got you got to you got to <laughs> account for him. He's too fast. Yeah, you, you think his name Speedy B for no reason? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to adjust the game for him. And and I mean, what how I look at it is you just got to put your, put your best cover guy, your best defensive back on him, and just say, just try to hold him down with somebody over the top all the time. But that only works so, that only works so much. You got to blitz. You got to do other things to kind of, you know, stir the play up, stir the quarterback up, because obviously there's, they got more air talented team and they got more athletes on the field. But when you're going into a game and you know you're going to get double teamed or bracket is what it's called in the CFL. You know you're going to get bracketed. How, do, mm -hmm. how does that change up your game? Do, you, do, they, do they run more screens more to get you the ball? Do they run more end arounds where you got to now catch handoffs? Like, how are they working on getting you the ball is the best way they can? Like, how do you adjust your play? Uh, well, to be honest, I don't really adjust my play. Uh, obviously, you know, our offensive coordinator, Tommy Condell, man, he got a, a unique way of, trying to get me the ball. Uh, but obviously when I'm double teamed or, or you know, I'm game playing on the defensive side, we got other guys on the side of the ball. Uh, they're just as dynamic like me, like uh, Brandon Allison. Uh, we got a, a young guy coming up, uh, Jalen Atkinson, um, coming up this year. So, I mean, I embrace the double team. I don't try to change my game. I just try to stick to the game plan and then hopefully the quarterback make the right read and try to throw me into a double team and get smacked or something. But... Uh, <laughs> But other than that, like I said, like I said earlier, uh, Tommy, once he, I've noticed, once Tommy noticed that I'm getting double team, you'll see a lot of screens and end arounds coming into the play. Yeah, Brandon, I want to talk to you a little bit about how you first started with the league, how you first got into the, the Canadian Football League. Um, I mean, you're a guy that grew up in North Carolina, right? And you were, uh, you played, you got, uh, you, you started to play in the NFL. You had three, uh, I would say, Pretty good, decent years, uh, as you can see by your picture behind you with the Washington Redskins, <laughs> right? I mean, you were mm -hmm. flying. If you watch some of your videos, you YouTube it and you look it up, the the videos where you were flying back there on special teams, but uh, the coach at the time, was it uh, Schottenheim? No. Which was a coach? That was Mike Shanahan. Shanahan. Mike Shanahan. Yeah, Shanahan told you that, uh, or kind of told the, you know, the press that you had to contribute a little bit more if you wanted to make the team how did mm -hmm. you how did you find the NFL um, back in the days when you just came out of college? Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I just had this uh, discussion with my friends not too long ago. I believe I was in the NFL before my time. If you think about it, like it wasn't like no Tyreek Hills, mm -hmm. uh, no John Rosses, and guys like that playing uh, when I was entering the league. Um, then also while I was in the league, they also changed the kickoff rule, so they moved the kickoff up, so it was nothing but uh, touchbacks uh, after that. So my game kind of like 
probably had to adjust uh, to be like the fourth and fifth uh, receiver on the roster. So by the time that happened, uh, I got hurt real bad um, in my hip and my knee. And I pretty much was on the back burner and didn't really get a fair shot uh, at playing wide receiver. What, what? And plus, we had a we had a we had a pretty deep vet, veteran recording. You know, we had Santana Moss and guys like that around there. So it was pretty tough getting in that rotation. I, I remember. I think you and Charleston probably were almost crossing paths in the NFL at that time because you were playing in Washington and Charleston. I think you were just a few years out. But yeah. I remember that uh, um, Brandon was saying you, were, Brandon, you were on the sidelines when it was that nice long pass from Michael Vick to. Deshaun, Deshaun, Jackson. Deshaun Jackson and Charleston yeah, yeah. Charleston was picking up Michael Vick from the airport uh, when he was going to Philly right yeah yeah, yeah. I was we were on the same plan oh, we were, we're yeah we were on the same <laughs> bus ride together me and Michael Vick and like when we showed up I felt like I wasn't gonna make the team at that moment because when we showed up <laughs> the whole it, it was fans all outside the damn facility holding signs saying dog killer and you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. like turn him around, send him back. We don't want him here. And yeah. I, it's just me and him. And I feel like I'm associated with him at that point. And I'm like, man, I don't want to be next to this dude. Yeah, I'm coming in with bad vibes. Yeah. <laughs> you just see the video of Charleston lagging back now. And yeah. then Michael Vick going ahead. You go ahead, Mike. And do yeah. that. No, but that was crazy. Brandon, what, was your, what were your thoughts? That's a great point about how you were ahead of your time because – if you look at the game now, and a great example is Tyreek Hill and the way that they use his speed and utilize him, and it's probably about the same height as you, right? And uh, probably the same skill set, right? Maybe a little bit heavier. Um, but what do you remember about your time in the NFL? Who are some of the guys that you that remembered that you remember that really stood out, or some of the guys that you were really looking up to uh, in the NFL when you were playing there? Well, I was. I went to. I mean, I grew up a huge Santana Moss fan, and obviously, I went right there to the team that was going. Um, it was a childhood. I mean, hero to me. I had posters of him in my college dorm, and I just so happened to go right to the team that he was at. So, you know, me. He welcomed me in. He embraced me. Uh, took me under his wing. He was pretty much my vet. Uh, he was the guy that I had to go get coffee for. You know, do my rookie <laughs> dues. Uh, to. But uh, man, he was a cool dude, man. He took me out and showed me the ropes, and and he he tried to help me transition to the uh, wide receiver position. But you know, I was so focused on being the best punt returner and kick returner, um, and trying to make a team and make a roster. But he definitely showed me a lot. I learned a lot from him, and just watching him practice and, and go out there and play every day, it was just an honor. And just he's just one of the greatest football players I ever watched with my own two eyes. That's awesome. That's awesome to be able to have that experience so you get to go and see your Heck mentor, yeah. right? right. And, I like Santana right. Moss. Santana Moss was a he was a dog on the football yeah. field. He was man. a baller, man. He was a dog. Yeah, yeah, he was good. So then I want to know a little bit about Brandon. You, you, you're, you're not going to play in the NFL anymore. You're, you know that you're coming up to the CFL. What was your first mm -hmm. thoughts of landing in Canada and, and landing in Hamilton? <laughs> Uh man, it was it was different. Well, I got a weird. I can tell you a weird story. I can tell you right now. So I drove up to Canada for my first time coming to Canada. I came through the Buffalo or whatever. Um, so I'm riding, and then uh, I noticed like the the speedometer uh, signs, uh, the speed limit yeah. signs, or how fast it goes. You know, how I say a hundred, but it's in kilometers. Yeah. So whole time I'm not thinking. I'm thinking it's a hundred miles per hour. <laughs> Drive down the QEW, just fly, just fly. I'm like, why am I passing everybody? So mind you, I get pulled over the first 45 minutes. I'm in Toronto, in Canada, so uh, I get pulled over or whatever. And I had to explain to him like what was going on. But at the end of the day, it was a cool cop, and he understood or whatever because uh, he seen my license. I'm from the United States, but that was just the welcome to Canada moment. That everything is in different uh metrics and things like that <laughs> stuff like that did you have something like that charleston too when you came to canada that you're like the temperature or Man. you know i had a temperature i had a, too. I had a I flew i flew to calgary and i had a rental car and in that rental car you know they don't send you them tickets directly they send the tickets to the rental car company so by the time the end of the season having I had about $2,000 in traffic <laughs> violations. 
Hey. Yes, and they rolled them all out on me at the same time the bill came, and was and I had two thousand dollars in traffic violations for like red light red light tickets. You know, yeah. we don't have cameras like that oh, in, yeah. in Michigan, where like a speed camera or you run a yellow light and it take a picture of your license plate. You ran that light, even if it's yellow. If you ain't fifty percent past it, you getting a ticket. Yeah. I, I had so many of those tickets going through driving zones, cameras everywhere, <laughs> and I just couldn't figure out how to identify where the damn camera at. <laughs> <laughs> You're always freaking out about that, I, dude. I drive so slow, not just like everywhere, so slow. <laughs> That's an expensive $2,000 way to be able to welcome to Canada moment and do that. Okay, Brandon, so you're in Canada now. What was your first thoughts mm -hmm. about the game, about the field, about the ball, about everything? Well, yeah, obviously the field is what really intrigued me and what really brought me in, brought me into the game of, of CFL football. Uh, so once I got there, I mean, being on the field, I was pretty much, you know, antsy to get out there because obviously my speed and the, the, the type of player that I am, I think the CFL suits my game better. Um, we got a lot of space and obviously the extra yardage and the extra field room for me to do what I do because I'm a, I think I'm a space player. So when I got there, I was just excited to get on the field. And once I once I learned the game, it took me about two or three games to learn the game. And then I think my second year out here after we uh, lost in the Great Cup that first year in, in SAS. Yeah. So my second uh, year coming back in, I, I felt a lot comfortable and I, I, I think I made my way in pretty well. Now, I want to ask that one question too about that game in Sask because uh, I, I was here. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, Charleston, if you were here for the activities year was that? in 2013. Oh, but, it was cold. Well, that's it right. That's freezing. what I want to ask oh, Brandon. Oh, it was cold. <laughs> that was a welcome to Canada moment as well. Too. Oh, my God. It was so cold. It was the coldest I've ever been. So, that's what guys on our team caught frostbites and couldn't play in the game and things like that was happening. No, oh, man. I'm cool, so, I'm cool, with, I'm cool with Sam Scott. And Sam Scott, oh sent, yeah, Sam. He sent me a picture <laughs> of his hands, like yep. blistered black and blue, and like I was, yeah, like, he had blisters on his hand, man. I'll never forget that. <laughs> so for the people that are that are watching then that, that uh, don't remember that day, I remember it like like it was yesterday because I had my youngest boy with me. We had everybody was in town, great cup festivities. But it was cold as fuck out there. Yeah, I was It here. was cold right. as, you know, it was about minus 30 to about minus 35 Celsius. I don't know what that is, Fahrenheit. It's, it's the same, and it was I... windy like days out of the week. <laughs> yeah. And it was cold all leading up all week to the game. So how was it when you're out there doing walkthrough before that? How cold is it out there for you guys? Are you guys just in and out? Well, believe, it, believe it or not, game day was the warmest day out of the week. Yeah. I remember they kept saying it's, it's, it's not no compared to what it was during the week. I'm like, I don't care. It's still cold. I just remember, I just remember Eric. So so I remember my first time ever. This is, you know, obviously I'm still I'm like three games into Canada. If you guys remember, I came at the end of that season. Yep, you came. In. Uh, I played in one last game of the regular season, and then we went to the playoffs. Yep. Um, so um, we played in shoes. We had to play in shoes. I'm like, what the hell? Why we got to play in shoes? <laughs> so we went out in the warm-ups, and I said, oh, I see. Why we have to play? In? The floor was literally concrete. It was hard as a rock. So we had to play in these big old freaking shoes and I hated that. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be me today. There's no way. I'm going to be honest, man. I, all I care about that game was, was getting through that game and getting the warm weather. Man. I, that game was pitiful because and then we playing sass and sass. Yeah. So it was already in lose-lose situation, man. That guy was going crazy when we went home, man. It was just, we didn't have no chance. Darren Durant was playing crazy that year. It was just no no chance. Well, and you know, like I said, we were here and, and being the fact that I lived in Regina and I had um, a friend of mine was playing on the Riders and um, he rented on my basement and, and just the excitement around Saskatchewan. Yeah, it was, it must have been a crazy environment just to be here. But the weather, you know, yeah. it went from minus 35 to game day. It was like minus six. And then it was almost, yeah, I think, exactly. zero, zero. And we we're like, oh, my God, this was a and the stadium <laughs> was packed. But it was just one yeah. of those things. I wanted to know from your end, Brandon, being on the opposition, because everybody here in Saskatchewan still says best sporting moment ever yeah, for heard, Ryder fans. Right? I heard from that whole week that Sass practiced indoors, if I'm not mistaken. They no, we, we did. We did one weekend and one, I mean, one indoor, one outdoor. 
Because we practice indoor one of the days, too, as well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. how much yeah. how is that what you remember about that weekend uh in saskatchewan what do you remember vaguely about that weekend in saskatchewan i just know we have no chance everywhere <laughs> we went was just green everywhere it was just it was just like i said it was my first year in canada so learning who what sas mean to the cfl was just like welcome to the cfl moment for me as well because it was just like it was like uh, how can I explain it? It was like a it was like a college atmosphere. It was just crazy, man. It was just going so hard, and it's like we supposed to be playing for the the, the Grey Cup, not a, a home game, uh, <laughs> Saturday night like, prime prime game. But it was just it was just like I just felt like I ain't have like it was just we just had a big underdog week. I mean, I, obviously, I went out with it. I mean, we went out there and tried our best. We just really didn't have no chance, man. It was tough. <laughs> well, we got to go to a commercial, but after when we get back, we want to talk a little bit more, more about your days in the CFL, how you're doing right now. I want to get into a little bit more about your Twitter. And Charleston has an interesting uh, few questions about our friend Rod Peterson. And uh, he was Ooh, on the show yeah, this I got, morning. I, got, I was on that show this morning, so I got. I, I want to know something. Because y'all, he told, he wrote, he gave oh. me his honest opinion about this is what happened. This was what I think happened. <laughs> so, yeah, well, I need to know. I need to know that what he think happened. Not what happened. Yeah. So we're gonna get into both sides of that. We're gonna talk a little bit about basketball betting. We have a great sponsor, mybookie.com, that we always get into. Are you a gambling man, Brandon, or no? Uh, sadly, I am. Oh yeah, sadly. Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> We're gonna see who you're gonna take the NBA Finals, and uh, you. I know you're uh, you're you live in Raleigh, Cal- N- Raleigh, North Carolina. You gotta follow hockey mm-hmm. too, man. You gotta be able to know who. Oh, going yeah, I'm, uh, I'm. I wouldn't say I'm a huge hockey fan, but over the years I've been in Canada, that I've grown uh, grow to love the game. <laughs> but obviously, you know the Carolina Hurricanes here, so I've always been a hometown fan of the Hurricanes, but. That's no, a- I love hockey. I love to grow to uh, love the game since I've been in Canada. That's awesome. We're going to find out who you're going to pick in the Stanley Cup Finals and more right after this. It's that time of year when divisions are decided, champions are crowned, and legends are born. Now, it's your turn to win big. You've heard the name just about everywhere. My bookie. They're the industry's leading online sportsbook and casino, and it's not hard to understand why. With thousands of lines to bet on all your favorite sports, NFL, NBA, and college ball, check, check, and check. MMA and soccer, they've got all the latest odds, period. Take advantage of MyBookie's prop builder and live in-game betting, where every single run, throw, and touchdown is another chance for you to put cash in your pocket. Visit their mobile-friendly website today and get your deposit matched halfway up to $1,000. Just use the promo code when you make your first deposit. The best part is they make it simple, with a variety of ways to deposit instantly, including credit card, bank transfer, Bitcoin, and more. Whether you're at home or on the go, on your laptop or on your phone, it's not too late to make your New Year's resolution a resolution to get paid. Bet, win, and get paid at MyBookie. Hi, my name is Rob Peterson. I'm the broker owner of Realty One in Regina. Real estate and life is about great people, and that's why I'm associated with Charleston Hughes and Johan Zielinski and IKS to sponsor the Better With Age podcast. Realty One was founded in Regina 11 years ago. It's an independent brokerage, it's local, and it's full of great people helping great local Regina people buy and sell properties. It's entrepreneurial based, which means you have non-narcissistic agents that have your best interest in mind, not their own. In these coronavirus times, real estate market right now in Regina and Saskatchewan is thriving because people are thinking more local, they're not thinking about traveling because we can't, and that's driving our market. When you hire a realtor, no matter who it is, no matter what company, please interview them. Please make sure they're a good personal fit for you because that's what this is all about. It's good people connecting themselves with someone that they know has their best interest in mind. And that's what the Realty One family does. And that's what a lot of agents in Regina do. But make sure you take your time and find the best fit for you and your family. And we're back with 
Speedy Banks is joining us, and we got, uh, so we still got so much more to talk about. Cause well, you, I got a little, I got a little story. You jump that, right into it. You can jump into the Rod Peterson or no? Yeah, I don't know if it's the Rod Peterson or it's something you did to me on the football field before, and it made oh, me this, so mad. This, this okay. So first, I don't know where we're okay. <laughs> 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 okay, so first, let me lead up to it, and then I'll let Charleston take it up from here. But uh, I heard this story yesterday when we were talking about you coming on the show, and I said, you know, what's your interaction with, oh, man, yeah, it's been good, good. Oh, except for this one time. Yeah, uh, it was one time on the field, man, and you know what? You were playing for I the could, Riders. I was playing for the Riders. You know, I was pass rushing, boom. Almost got to the quarterback, ball went in the air. Deep ball, touchdown. And, you know, we start walking back, and I'm, I'm mad already because I ain't get the sack. Mad because you scored the touchdown. We started, like, walking back, you know, back to, uh, to, for the field goal and everything. And I wasn't paying attention because I was mad as ever. And then next to you know, you ran past me, and you stuck your finger in my damn ear hole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And I got so, and I tried to run and get back, but the low, they was getting ready to line up and everything, and I couldn't do nothing yep. about it, and I was so pissed I off. That. <laughs> I'm going to tell you who I learned that from. For the most irritating person in the CFL, y'all can probably guess, he is on my team. Oh, Simone. 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 Yeah, I was just going to say. Simone <laughs> yeah. Lawrence, man, he told me, man, how to, he just teach me how to get up under people's skin and how to irritate people, man. Because, you know, man, you know, with an OG, man, you got to kind of take his mind off the game because if, if, if OG right there focused on every play, man, he probably get a sack, uh, one, one sack out of three plays. So I got to, you know, get his mind off and make him chase me around a little bit. <laughs> you should have seen, Brandon, when we were talking yesterday and Charles was going, fuck you, hon. It pissed me off. Like, it really pissed me off. Just, <laughs> we were just laughing about it, laughing about it. finger got all the way to the eardrum. And, and I was so mad. I was like, how the, how the fuck did he get his finger in my ear? The ear hole ain't even that damn big. And he was so accurate. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Just a magician. Yeah, They're just yeah. in and out, in and out. I want to know. Okay, so that's a good question I want to ask, Brandon. How many other players, or how many other guys in the league or who... How many other guys in the league do that out there in the CFL? Is there anybody that's a good oh, instigator like that, or is Simone the best? Man, it, man, each team got a good three or four guys that just just be just messing around all game. Cause at the end of the day, everybody cool, everybody know each other. We play each other so so much though, so we bring a little extra to the game by just messing with each other. But everybody knows Simone and Lawrence is the ultimate one person that's just gonna get up under somebody's skin twenty four seven. That's why I'm glad. He on my team and I don't have to play against him because I'll probably take a 15 yard every time I play against him. <laughs> Just take a 15 yard. <laughs> For real, man. But, um... Yeah, that's just, that's just part of the game. We're just out there having fun at the end of the day. That's awesome. Charleston, is there anybody you can think of in the league that gets under your skin or a player like that that's uh, an instigator or an agitator, I guess you could say? I don't know, man. They just... Cause don't nobody really fool with me. Cause usually I'm the one talking all the trash, and I'm just yeah, you know what I'm talking. yeah, I'm the one doing all the talking and enforcing. So that's why I said that was that one moment where I was like, like he got me. I couldn't do nothing about it. I couldn't do nothing about it. Just just look and get mad. I was like, went back to the sideline. Like man, he stuck his finger in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So, Brandon, what uh, you're you're now into the CFL? Let's go back to the to 2013, 2014. Now you're into the CFL. Uh, you're starting to get the hang of it. Um, did you know then that you were going to be able to be as as dominant of a player, or did you kind of envision yourself being as good as what you have developed into? Uh, to be honest, I always knew the type of uh, player that I was. I just always needed the opportunity and uh, the it's a coach that really believed in me um, on the offensive side of the ball. But uh, prior to that, I mean, I knew that my, my first love in football game is a punt returner. I uh, Growing up watching D'Angelo Hall and guys like that, um, I just love punt returns. So I knew with the halo rule that I have a lot of lot of uh, advantage, I, I could say. And then within the CFL, punt return, you're going to get eight or nine of them a game. So that's a whole other factor of the game. So I knew if I just take advantage of my punt return abilities and, and focus that on that, that 
that would give me more opportunities on offense and, and and offensive coordinators would have to give me opportunity on offense. So obviously I think I did that, especially the 2015 season, I think it was, or 14 season. Uh, when we went to the Great Cup again in uh, Calgary. Uh, I mean, BC against Calgary. But um, I think I mastered the punt returner. I had a pretty good career uh, punt returner. Man, he's seen a lot of Great Cup checks in Hamilton, huh? <laughs> yeah. How many times you been to yeah, the Great Cup? Yeah, but I'm 0 for 3, though. You're like, 0 for 3. 0 for 3. He does, he does have a point. Okay, now on that note, we, we got a, we, Charleston was on the Rod Pearson show this morning, like we talked about earlier. And one of the things mm-hmm. we said is that Charleston was talking about our show, and he goes, yeah, we're going to bring on Speedy Banks. And then immediately Rod Peterson said, uh, he goes, oh, we got, uh, he's got an issue with me. I don't think he likes me too much. And <clears throat> what did he say, Chuck? What did he say his side of the story was? His side of the story was this is that you had one offense player of the year that year. <clears throat> he felt like you shouldn't have won offense player of the year. He I felt guess. like Cody Fajardo probably should have won uh, mm-hmm. most valuable player. And then he said he started rolling out all these statistics about <clears throat> why Cody Fajardo should have won and then started rolling out all the statistics about why you shouldn't have won. And he said you kind of like started you know, beaking back with him, telling him all this, you know, this, that, and the other. This is why, this is why I am who I am, basically, is what he right. said. But then he started rolling out, well, how about you just show it in the game? Or he, he might have said something real slick to you, and it just went all out from there. And then y'all ended up losing in the game, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then he mm-hmm. asked, and then I think he went out there and instigated it. Well, and, he, he, right. he said something about his two Grey Cup championships with the Riders versus your right. none or something like that. And then he said, after he that... A, he said he took a picture of his rings and everything and flashed <laughs> them online and said, where are, you, where are your rings at now? So so, right, right. so let's get your side, Brandon. I want to hear your side of it and what happened. He said it that. was harmless from his side. He said, it's just it's just football. This is, this is what we do. He was like, it's just talk. I mean, yeah. At the end of the day, that's exactly what happened. I mean, but he was he was trying to take some personal shots. So all I did was um, block him. I mean, if I don't want to see, if you don't like me, why are we communicating? So, I mean, it's nothing personal. It's not like I'm all we beefing. It's a personal beef or nothing like that. I just don't have no interest interest in the things that he think about and, and his opinion. That's all that is. Nothing, nothing more than nothing less. At the end of the day, like you said, it's football. I mean, obviously, everybody don't don't like me, and I know some. Uh, some people like me, some people don't. Some people wanted me to win the MOP, some people didn't. That's, that's part of the game. But he was saying something, he was throwing the no-ring shot out there, and then obviously I felt like he was coming at me when I had got hurt, and mm-hmm. people were saying that I chickened out in the Great Cup and things like that when I really got hurt. And, you know what I mean, they was trying to say that I, I wasn't. So that's my point of view of it. But at the end of the day, that's exactly what happened. But it's no personal beef, but I just don't have – no liking in him at all. <laughs> <laughs> you're not. You're not the first one to say that. Yeah, no, so you're not the first one to say that on this show. Bo <laughs> Levi was the first one to say it on this show. He said, oh, for real? Oh, yeah, "Oh yeah, Bo don't like him either." <laughs> oh wow. Well, what's up, Bo? Appreciate it. <laughs> 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 yeah. there, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more players like that in the CFL that aren't going to like it, but that's awesome. Um, so celebrity celebrity boxing match, you against Rob Peterson. Hey, let's get it. I'm all for it. <laughs> there you go. I got to get Floyd in my corner. Maybe I can make a couple million. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it on YouTube, but then away you go. Well, let's get you right. guys paid, man. So that's awesome. Right. Um, I want to talk about a little bit about, um, before we go into your charity side and and we were talking um on a previous show with doug brown uh former winnipeg blue bombers great defensive end and and all Mm -hmm. the stuff that you guys do uh for charity and you're another person that uh, i believe that doesn't get enough recognition for what he does for the community of hamilton and in north carolina uh i want to bring up some good stuff about you that you are uh i would put you up there almost in in the category i think you're above charleston in the entertainment factor if people haven't been on uh speedy banks 87 on twitter 
Go follow this man on Twitter because <laughs> this man. I don't think I got Charleston now. I ain't got Charleston now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're pretty entertaining. You're better than I think than Charleston. Some of the stories that aren't always about football, that are about life and this and that, you're one of the guys that tells it like it is. Whether you're going, right. uh, one of the things that I was laughing about so was. I'm just a shit talker. I don't <laughs> tell <laughs> how it is. I yeah, didn't say yeah. you're just a shit talker. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that you're a shit talker, though, but that's good. But Brandon, when he puts on there, he's, he's saying about how a life moment, like when uh, a lady approached him in the mall and gave her earrings to him and said the words. No, it wasn't, it wasn't in the mall. I was out at a bar. Oh, okay, at a bar. And what did she say to you? Yeah. She walked up to me, taking her earrings out, and she handed her earrings to me and told me to take them home so she can come over and get them later. <laughs> Charleston's face right there. <laughs> Charleston, has that happened to you quite a bit? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> so these are just a, one of the many things that you're going to get on Speedy Banks' Twitter. But, uh, yeah. you know, um, Brandon, you're one of those guys that you tell it like it is. If, um, you know, we're just talking about that with the Rod Peterson you know, you're not afraid for conflict, but you're a, a guy that I would imagine stands up for his teammates. You stand up for what mm -hmm. you believe is right. You're not shy on Twitter, right? No, yeah, I definitely wear my emotion on the sleeve. It's kind of a gift and a curse. Uh, sometimes <laughs> I do need to shut up and it get me in trouble. But at the end of the day, I stand on what I believe in. Uh, I stand on 10 tones strong. It's, it's, I got a little man syndrome in it, but... At the end of the day, I, I, I really put 100%, 110%, whatever I do and whatever I believe in. And if you're on my side, we're going to ride, and I'm like I'm going to tell you like it is. I mean, we can have different opinions and different thoughts, but at the end of the day, I'm going to voice mine. Yeah, and, and one of the funny things that Charleston has done, I don't know if you've known this, but uh, so when somebody goes on to the social media and has something to say about Charleston, Charleston. Oh, I don't block nobody. I come looking for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't block, I don't block a soul. Let let a fan like let let somebody like Rob Peterson come on my show, talk about or just come on my like my Twitter or something and start trash talking. I'm gonna start finding out who you are. I'm gonna start doing some research. <laughs> so, you can find out a lot about some people. You start googling names and stuff and it's time to find out. Yeah, that, yeah that's true, but I, I just ain't got enough energy to talk to all that. I, I got all. I got it all day. <laughs> <laughs> Charleston, it's funny, Brandon. I've been beside him when he's done this. If there's a guy that gets on him on social media, you know what he does? He'll Google him. He'll find out where he works. He'll get the pictures of social images. Like his yeah, pictures I'll make of him, him block me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I should start doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those things where it's like, oh, my God. But, uh, you know, that's one of the things that I, I do appreciate about um, following you on Twitter is that you're a man that says it like it is, and I think that exactly like you are on the football field. Uh, you're a guy that gives everything you got for his teammates, and that's uh, very commendable. And, and uh, that's why, as an Argo fan, I hate seeing you uh, do so well on the field. But as a fan of yours, uh, keep on doing that, man. You're, that's awesome to see. So one of the things that we want to talk about here is, uh, like we were talking about before, is that how Charleston, when he comes into the, some of these different cities, what I've seen, uh, as his friend over the last few years here in Regina is that he goes all in in the community and he goes all in to help others. And it isn't a thing where he wants recognition about it. You're the same way. Tell us about some of the things you've done in Hamilton and uh, for the CFL and especially about the newest thing you just did for the first Canadian CFL player that you oh, yeah. did for a charity. Uh, yeah, I'm, um, I'm definitely, uh, I definitely make it... Uh make it an obligation uh, to myself uh, to stay in the community, stay active in the community, uh, especially in Hamilton. Uh, I, a lot of people know what kind of community uh, Hamilton is. Uh, so guys like myself and, you know, Simone and guys like that, Jeremiah Masoli, we definitely make our obligation to get out in the community and just give back to the, to the future, uh, give guys a uh, positive hope and just share our story and the things we've been through to uh, try to encourage others to, you know, do the right thing um and it's crazy times that we living in right now so i'm definitely uh active in the community uh at, also at home i have a non a non-profit uh with a couple friends of mine that we just do a lot of events uh, i had a, a event not too long ago for the community and it was a great event that turned out for the community and i, I feel very proud uh that we was able to do that 
But um, yeah, and then within the not uh, the NFT, uh, that was pretty dope. Uh, I, I learned about NFT before I even knew about NFT. I actually bought an NFT before I even knew what an NFT was. Uh, my son talked me and bond to a Steph Curry uh, NFT before I even knew what it was. But actually, when I did my research on it, I learned more about it. And then a guy hit me up interested in designing one for me. So I said, I put it together. Uh, why not? Let's, you know, make it available to some CFL fans. Uh, so obviously we brought it to life and it was a pretty, pretty dope idea with how, you know, cryptocurrency and things like that uh, uh, blowing up in the world now. Uh, digital uh, plan cards and things like that is, is coming very, very valuable and very popular nowadays. Uh, so that was a pretty dope idea. And that was seeing how we could monetary off of it. And I'm like, uh, I don't want to monetary off of it. We can just, uh, we can just uh, donate it to a nonprofit. So, you know, once I put that behind it, I mean, it was, I got a lot of people uh, interested in, you know, give, uh, donate to, donating to the, to the NFT and, because at the end of the day, it was for a good cause, right? So it was pretty dope, and I was pretty excited to do it. I'm happy that I was able to do it. And we raised a good amount of money to donate to the charity that uh, that we decided to donate to. And that was for a charity in Hamilton, right? That you donated that yes, to? It was, uh, yes, it was a donate. Uh, it was actually a charity that, I, uh, that I'm actually familiar with, that I actually do a couple of things a year with. So it was a pretty pretty dope experience, and they was pretty happy uh, to receive it. Uh, they actually sent me a gift back here in the States uh, to thank me. That's awesome. Have you heard about that, Charleston? Didn't even hear about it. I just looked into Get Bone NFT pretty recently. Like, hey, bro, you gotta get it, bro. Yeah, what? I I could. I didn't. I don't. I didn't know how to research the information to find out. Like, do people? Do I go to somebody to do this? But I did look at (laughs) Get Bone NFTs. Like, out of the hundred and thirty sacks that I got, try to find plays and clips Mm -hmm. where I can, you know, just highlight those plays. Right, right, bro. It's pretty. It's a pretty uh, dope business. That's going. Um, I believe in probably about a good ten years, bro. It's going to be something. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and that, and you reached out to to be able to get that, Brandon, or a guy reached out to you. Somebody actually reached out to me. It's a guy. Actually, the guy's in Toronto. His name is Grant. Uh, he was in Toronto, and uh, he actually, I think, he was a part of the first guy that did the MLB. I think it was an MLB player, if I want to say. Um, and he was like, shoot, uh, what would a CFL player? And he, I guess he, out of all the CFL players, he was trying to think, uh, which one to reach out to. And he reached out to me and I read his message and I'm like, bro, I just bought a NFT for my son for Steph Curry. And I was just reading up on this. Like what a coincidence. <laughs> they sent the message. It's meant and to then happen. we just went from there. We just, yeah. We just built a relationship from there. And he actually have a developing company that's out of Toronto that actually made the digital car for me. That's awesome. Man, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah we're going to talk yeah. after this. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, Charleston's going to want to get hooked up now after Definitely this. Definitely going to talk after this. Oh, you know hey, something, but, that, you but, know but, something but, that just but, popped in my head now that I think about that? You know we was almost teammates. What happened? Why you ain't signed a deal? <laughs> <laughs> I, got tra- I got traded to Hamilton. When? What? Well, I don't know nothing about this. See? Yeah. Didn't even know it. See, look. Like- yeah, we're, he was just talking about that on the show too this morning. He said, and before before playing on the Riders, he got traded to Hamilton for about ten minutes, right? Yeah, <laughs> I went from Calgary. I got traded to Hamilton. I was in. I was a a member of the Hamilton Tiger Cats for all of about 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> Talked to your GM and everything about welcome to the team and all that good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> then the then they retraded me to the Riders. <laughs> Oh, I need to call Burke. I got to call Scott. <laughs> <laughs> we messed up, man. We messed up, man. It, was, it was when y'all had, I think, John Chick and Tracy. Yeah, Tracy. Adrian Tracy? Yep. Oh. Well, like I said, I need to call Scott Mitchell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brandon's going to be on the phone next. We'll see what happens here. But yeah. one of the things that uh, we're definitely looking forward to, Brandon, thanks for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Did you want to talk to him about basketball or betting or no? We got to get it out the way, man. We got to go ahead and talk about this. You know, we got to figure out what's your, because you seem like a basketball guy. I know you're a track and field guy like I used to be, too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely a basketball guy. I'm definitely a basketball guy. I watch it every night. Well, John Wall is one of your buddies, isn't it? 
Yeah, yeah. It's one of my good friends grew up together. Yeah. I mean, oh, so you gotta okay, be a basketball okay, guy. Okay, so. Yeah, you gotta be a basketball guy. Yeah. So this whole yeah. this whole next couple episodes, we're gonna take you because I know you a betting guy too. I know you where <laughs> you know exactly where to put the money yeah. at to know where I'm gotta come up, where I got the win at. <laughs> so this whole next phase of this show is sponsored by my bookie. You go to mybookie.com, you sign up, you get every dollar match. All you gotta do is put in the better with age logo and the better with age name. And then you're right away, right away to betting on these next couple clips. Make sure you take the betting and go take his advice for it. Who are you taking? So who you take? Sorry, Charles. So yep. Who are you going to take Bucks Nets? Man, it's, it's up and it's so up and down, man. The Kyrie thing just, just took me all the way left with it. Damn, James Harden play. I think they updated him questionable, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, by the hour ago. Yep. Yeah. Um, James Harden can be James Harden, man. It's not nobody can mess with Brooklyn, man. It's too much firepower with Brooklyn, and I don't, I don't think Giannis' game really trans, transferred to playoff basketball. Um, so I, I was with the Bucks until the, all the injuries, but now if Kyrie ain't there or James Harden ain't here, I don't think they got a chance because I don't think Kyrie. I mean, Kevin Durant can do it by himself. Uh, because I think uh Giannis and Middleton is. No, they 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 shooting pretty well right now, so I don't know. It, it depends on injuries right now. Okay, so let's go. You gotta Pick, put your money yeah, down. Yeah, you gotta you gotta bet. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, gotta put gotta, my money down. You got hundred dollars. I'm gonna put my money down. I'm going uh, next. Kevin next? Durant, man, he the best player in the world right now. All right, okay. Who are you taking, Sixers, Hawks? Uh, I'm going uh, Sixers. Why is everybody taking like Sixers? Really, but I don't. I think, like MB. I don't think he translates to bas- bas- to playoff basketball yeah, either. I, I think he he's, had one bad half. You know, so far. I, I do. I think it starts down low in playoff basketball. But you need support, and you got Simmons can't make a shot outside of four feet. So I mean, how <laughs> I do you? Agree. Uh, I agree, but I think the other guys are playing real well now. Middleton, yeah, Middleton, yeah. what's that? Fifteen. Uh, number 15, he's playing pretty well yeah. right now. I don't know. I just I like MB though. Okay. Who are you liking in the West then between the Clips and the Jazz? Uh, Clips and Jazz. I, I like Donovan Mitchell. I, I, I like Jazz right <laughs> I now. Told I, you. I don't have no faith in I have no faith in the Clippers, man. They they always let me down. I had high hopes, <laughs> man. And when they first built it. Paul George, <laughs> Paul George okay, just no. been letting people down. That's who it is. Yeah, man. Play off P. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so then, and uh, who do you take overall to win the NBA championship? If you had to put your money down on mybookie.com, who are you taking in the NBA championship? Right now in the NBA championship, I would take the Nets. Oh, Nets over uh, Chris Paul and them. I think I, I'm a big fan of Chris Paul. Yeah. I think he's going to make it to the uh, finals. Um. But I think it's just the Nets, man. That's just too much power, power, man. If they ever lock down on defense, man, it's gonna be one fifty to one hundred every game. There you go. I know uh, that's. But like, uh, I, I don't think it's gonna happen. I'm taking the underdogs. I'm, <laughs> I'm taking the Clippers. Who you got? Who you got? I'm taking the Clippers. Okay. Yeah, I think the Clippers have been letting down too many people, and I think Kawhi is just like what he did here in Toronto. Uh, is that he's gonna put everything, all LA on his shoulders, all those disappointment. And he's gonna carry him, so he ain't gonna be able to do that like he did in Toronto. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna be able to do that over there. You watch, just watch, boys. We'll oh, see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk hockey. Your last segment uh, of the show, hockey. Who are you picking the final four teams? Who do you got between Vegas and Montreal? Uh, I'm gonna go Montreal. I'm support Canadian Canadian team. <laughs> well, go you Montreal, gotta support man. those Habs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you really, you really are half Canadian now. Yeah. Eh? You really, yeah. Hey, I'm trying, I'm trying to get my citizenship, man. Hey, uh, I'm trying to uh, go alley hoop or something. There you yeah. <laughs> well, we welcome that. Hopefully, you get that done. Who are you taking then with the Islanders and the Lightning? Oh man, I don't, uh, this that was a tough. I think I'm gonna go Lightning on that one. Yeah, uh, and but, then. Who who are you taking then for the Stanley Cup champion? Uh, don't tell me you're going to take Montreal again and and really win over all nah, those. No, I don't. I don't think Montreal can win it though. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I think Lightning. I'm gonna go Lightning. Lightning. See, that's what I picked last time. You, did. Time you too. picked Lightning too. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saying Vegas all the way. <laughs> yeah, and Char- <laughs> Charleston's going Vegas all the way. So there you go. We have our betting segment for mybookie.com. Well, Brandon, um, we really appreciate it. 
I really appreciated getting to, to know you, to chat with you. Uh, good luck. It's so, uh, it's just awesome to be able to know that we're going to be able to see you guys on the field. You guys are going to be having lots of conversations four times this year on the field to be able to do yeah. that. Lots of chances for poking someone in Man, the ear hole. let them do that shit no more. <laughs> <laughs> what? You yeah. never get into it. You got every, me once. You ain't never getting me again. <laughs> every, every, yeah, I'm going to get you somewhere else. Get you. <laughs> every game, Charles is going to have like tape over the ear hole or yeah. something like that. <laughs> we'll see what happens, but all the best to you this upcoming season. Uh, it, it's awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's awesome to be able to, uh, if, if anybody's watching, go out and uh, watch uh, Speedy Banks on Twitter. Uh, it's worth your weight in gold. We, <laughs> o- we always end the show with uh, Charleston's wise words, so I'll toss it over to him to be able to finish off. Yeah, man. At what, at, at what age do you just take the, the S out of the Speedy Banks and just Petey Banks? When do you start getting slower? Man. <sighs> I, to be honest, I'm, I'm going to be real honest. I think I'm a little bit slower now, man. I tried to run with the young guys the other day, man. I was like, man, I don't know. <laughs> man, I'm losing the hell, man. Father Kyle catching up, man. But, uh, but I don't know, man. I, to be honest, this is really genetic, man. My parents was fast like that for, for a while. And um, hopefully I can be fast for a while so I can keep running away from people like you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. That's cool. But this is the Better With Age webcast. The reason we call it the Better With Age webcast because there's many things that get better with age. There's like wine, there's cheese. Hopefully your speed just keeps improving the better you get. Justin Gatlin goes fast for a long time until he was 37, 38, and he was still running 10, 10, 1, 9, whatever. Those guys fast. Fast. But Justin Gatlin proved that you could still hold your speed when you're at when you're at an older age, so take notes from him. But Yeah, I'm going to definitely do that. But the most important thing of them all is friendships, man, and although we were teammates for all of 10 minutes, you're still one of my good <laughs> friends, man. I know we, ba- we, we banter back and forth online. I've even had guys, some of his teammates, try to fight me and go like, hey, man, don't be talking to my teammate like that. He was, <laughs> he was trying to hold him down, and I was like, man, I was joking. Like, relax, <laughs> young puppy. <laughs> 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 but yeah man thanks for coming on the show man this was awesome nah y'all thanks for having me man y'all show pretty dope man any day I could do the help to, for the show and be back on it I'm all for it man hey we'll <laughs> we'll have some beers in Hamilton hopefully one of these days soon that's all we want to see and uh, good luck again good luck to you Speedy we'll uh, we'll talk to you soon here up in Canada alright enjoy y'all day fellas alright yep. take care <laughs>